This lesson is on becoming a flipped learner and how to really rock owning your own learning power. Lesson objectives are where I tell you what's going on in the lesson today, what we're trying to learn. You always need to make sure you pause your video before you leave the screen and write the objectives down. So by the end of this lesson, you're going to be able to tell me what flipped learning is, list and explain what your student expectations are, and follow those to successfully completing a flipped lesson. Your keywords also need to be in your notes. These are the key concepts of the lesson and they tie directly to our objectives. So again, make sure before you leave the screen to pause and write these down. For today, we're focusing on flipped learning, components of a flipped lesson, expectations of a flipped student, how to be a flipped learning master. So before we start by defining what it is, I would like you to raise your hand for each time a statement applies to you. Have you ever been frustrated because a teacher went too fast or too slow during a lesson? Have you ever needed a lesson to be repeated more than once to understand the concept? Have you ever gotten irritated with a disruptive classmate? Have you ever missed a day of classes and not understood the concepts that were covered while you were gone? And have you ever wanted to learn the material on your own pace and then move on to what you view as a more productive use of your time? If so, flipped learning could be the answer for you. Traditional learning deals with two big concepts, direct instruction that we call lecture and independent practice often known as homework. Traditionally, lecture happens at school and independent practice goes home. This is largely due to how much time there is in a day. We can't do all of it in a 45 minute class period, so we have to send something home. Flipped learning is also about how we're using your time. Because independent practice takes the most teacher support and lecture is more student passive learning, we can flip these around so that independent practice moves to school where you have the teacher's support in the classroom and lecture goes home in the form of a video. Meaning, this is what you're going to need to put down for today. Flipped learning is sending your lecture home as homework and keeping your independent practice in the classroom. We're flipping the learning model. There are lots of advantages to doing flipped learning. First off, your homework time is much shorter. Videos are usually no more than 10 minutes. You can now move through the lessons and learn at your own pace because a pause and rewind and review button are right at your fingertips. You don't miss lecture when you're absent. It's already posted for you online to access from anywhere you have internet. You have a readily available study tool. You can go back and rewatch these lessons anytime you need to. And this puts you in charge of your own learning. Plus, in a way, it gives you 24 seven teacher support. The video lessons are there for you anytime, anywhere with internet. And when you're practicing the skills, you're in the classroom where the teacher is as well. The components of a flipped lesson involve lesson objectives and keywords, which we've already seen. These help you to know what's going on in the lesson and what you're trying to learn. Then we have the main lesson portion of the video and we'll have ed puzzle questions. These will pop up periodically during the video to help you check your understanding. Make sure you pause your video and write these objective components down. This was one of our keywords, so you want to make sure you have in your notes what these are and what they mean. Now, the expectations of a flipped student. This is what you need to do to be successful with flipped learning. One, you need to actually watch and listen to the video all the way through one time before you do anything else. So, we're practicing this right now. You're literally just watching this video today. 
Then you're going to watch it a second time and take notes. We're going to include questions in our notes about things you don't understand in the material. So as you're writing notes down the second time, if you really don't understand what your expectations are, you jot a question. What does this mean? Three, you need to answer the Ed Puzzle practice questions. Make sure you write down any problems that you don't get correct the first time in your notes. You need to do all of this, steps one through four, before the due date in class. And then, when we come back to class, you need to ask your questions that you've written down in your notes during the Q&A session to make sure that you really understand this before we practice it. Pause your video, repeat and rewind if you need to, but make sure that you have these five expectations in your notes. Last but not least, I need to teach you how to be a flipped learning master. Step number one, complete your flipped homework early. You'll have one to two take home videos a week. You need to make sure you've watched those early on before the due date. Two, make sure you start with step one on your expectations. Watch the video through completely without trying to take notes or anything else. You'll notice that I post the video on the lesson in classroom as well as the UD puzzle I expect you complete. That way you can watch the video through before the questions interrupt. Watch it a second time to take your notes. This is a good time to use the Ed Puzzle because the checkpoints will help you keep track of what you need to do. Then use your pause, rewind, and rewatch buttons as many times as you need. If you need to watch that lesson five bazillion times to get it, go for it. The power is yours. Make sure you review your practice results from the Ed Puzzle questions and write down questions in your notes. Asking these in class makes the t classroom portion focused on your needs and it helps you focus your studying on the parts you don't get. Again, pause your video. Put these five steps to being a flipped learning master down in your notes. Now, I'd like you to do a little mental exercise. I want you to compare and contrast your student expectations with how to rock and master being a flipped learner. How similar are they? Why do you think that is? Jot it in your notes for me. And for our sum up, flip teaching just flips homework and lecture around. So it puts you in charge of your learning and lets you make the most of your lessons. In this point, I'll give you a little reminder about your practice assignment, like your Ed Puzzle. Today, or tomorrow, whichever it turns out to be, you'll be working on a flipped lesson practice on end punctuation. So, thanks for sticking with me. Rewatch and complete your notes.